Good day, fellow investors. Now, is the market overvalued? The question that comes around all the time now. Well, I'll discuss today three measures that show how overvalued the market is, and I'll discuss which one is the best. The first measure is, of course, the price to earnings ratio. The second measure is the cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio. And the third measure is the Warren Buffett market valuation measure that measures stock market capitalization and GDP. So let's first start with the price earnings ratio. The problem with the price earnings ratio is that it's extremely volatile. For example, in 2009, when it was the best time to buy stocks, or in 2002, the price earnings ratio were extremely high because of the past recessions and low earnings. So it doesn't really show what's going on in business cycles, very volatile, can be skewed by temporary activity. So it's a measure to look, but not really to take for granted. Therefore, there is a better measure, the cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio that uses 10 year average earnings in order to eliminate cyclical influences. Here you can see how it's much less volatile than the price earnings ratio, but still very volatile because there are some limitations to the CAPE ratios and I want to discuss them here. The first one is that many stocks don't have meaningful 10-year average earnings. Think of Facebook, wasn't even traded until 2013, so you can't really look at CAPE ratios for Facebook. The second is that the length of a business cycle can be longer than 10 years, or much shorter, so the CAPE can be skewed by two or three recessions in a decade. Something unbelievable now, but largely possible in the next 10 years. Thirdly, and this is more an accounting, principle, the generally accepted accounting principles skew stocks earnings. Because when you have an asset, you usually don't revalue it on the upside. But if a company bought a building 50 years ago, that building is now 10 times more valuable than it's on the books. If it's not revalued, you don't have to revalue it. So it can be on the books at zero, depreciated, but it can have huge values. So those earnings are not in an income statement until a building like that is sold. On the contrary, according to generally accepted accounting principles, if the value of that building of that investment falls under what the company paid for it and under what is on the books, then the company has to impair so, or cancel out the value on the balance sheet. So earnings are negatively skewed over the last, I think, 30 years since that change was made to the generally accepted accounting principles. So earnings are brought down by impairments, however, not revalued by appreciation of the value of assets. And that's something very important. And that's why I always ask to go beyond the number, really look at the building, what's behind the number on the balance sheet. There are some beautiful companies that have low assets on the balance sheet, but in reality, those assets have huge value. So if the CAPE isn't good to determine whether a market is overvalued or not, there is one measure that Buffett loves and prefers to see whether the market is overvalued or not. And that's the whole market capitalization measured in relation to the GDP. That ratio, economic activity and market capitalization should explain whether the stock market is overvalued or not. And as we can see here, the current ratio shows that the market is highly overvalued, even more overvalued than it was at the end of the 1990s with the dot-com bubble or in 2007 with the housing bubble. On the contrary, when the ratio of the stock market capitalization to GDP was low, you can see that it was a great time to buy stocks. 1980s, 2002, and 2009, 2008, 2009. So when that is low, it's great to buy stocks. The problem is that since 2000, when the market was also overvalued as it is now, it took the market 13 years to break even. So investors that invest now in the S&P 500, I think they are looking again at the last decade. Because if interest rates change, then the S&P 500 will also be gravitated down. So very, very dangerous to invest. Now, okay, here is another video telling me that the market is overvalued. But let's go 
let's go a step further and see what you can do. That's the most important. The first thing is that the market is overvalued towards the GDP and sooner or later people are going to ask for high salaries, there will be inflation, there will be higher costs because companies cannot make such huge profits. The problem is that the profits even didn't even grow in the last 10 years, it's just the valuations. When the interest rates revert, it will be a terrible time for stocks. So what you can do, well, as always, look at investments from a business perspective and hedge. I have discussed gold miners, I have discussed emerging markets, I have discussed companies that have good yields, good dividends, that are in developed markets, so by creating such a portfolio that has good stable earnings or growth companies, you can protect yourself over the long term. When the S&P 500 enters in a bear market, probably everything will crash, but I can't time the market. Therefore, the only thing is to find those stocks that over the long term will do good. So if you stick to rebalancing your portfolio around the value investing strategy, I think you can't go wrong over the long term. Please subscribe if you like the concept that we discuss here. There will be plenty more stocks as now I'm back from holidays. So uh, I'll dig more into stocks, talk about specific investments, research. So I'll be happy to share that with you. Click subscribe if you haven't. Click like if you like the content. Leave your comments below, ask questions. I learn so much from your comments. So thank you on that. And I'll see you in the next video.